hello beautiful people <laughs> it's been so long oh my goodness so excited to be back here today we're going to be discussing an exciting topic as usual we're spilling the news on u.s immigration um we're going to be talking about how to prepare yourself for your interview your green card interview okay so um usually if you're going to be applying for a green card you are most likely going to be invited for an interview and you're going to be um you know facing your interviewer they'll have all your documents that you have ever submitted from the beginning of your immigration journey so today we're going to be looking at um, a few of the areas that you want to cover um, and how to prepare yourself for the interview we'll start with just um, just a few pointers and then we can go more into detail later welcome guys um, I see someone just joining in drop me a comment and then I'll read them very very soon all right, friends, so let's start. Um, the first one is usually this is how I prep my clients when I'm going with them for USCIS interviews. The first thing is that normally um, you should go over your forms. Okay, so let's say you have applied for a marriage-based interview. I mean, a marriage-based green card. So you're married to a U.S. citizen and you filed a petition to adjust your status you're here as a foreigner you're here in the u.s and you filed a petition to adjust your status and then your petition has been approved and you're supposed to go for an interview what do you do um first of all you need to print out everything that you submitted to the uscis and in fact you you may need to sometimes even backtrack so you look at how you how did you come in ask yourself how did you get into the u.s if, for example, you came in through um, a visa, you should have information of, you know, when you came in, how long your stay was for, just details about your application itself, your prior application before coming in. And then um, after you prepare, you know, you print out all the forms, make sure you are going through everything line by line, making sure that there are no discrepancies, you understand what you've put on the paper um you know every little detail you know for example things like your address history those are things that must not be inconsistent um i was recently working with a client and sometimes people tend to mix up dates and those are some of the red flags that the uscii the uscis officer will be looking at too for example um a portion of the form will ask you that give us your address history for the last five years so we're currently in 2021. So of course, if you're applying for anything, your address history should date as far back as July 2016, okay? So July 2016, tell us, walk us through where you have been, where you have lived, you know, where your addresses have been, where you've resided, and make sure you don't jump any portion. So for example, if we're going to do, you know, your address history for the past week, you make sure that you transition very smoothly. So from Monday, you lived in North Carolina up until Wednesday, 12 p.m. From Wednesday, 12 p.m., you left North Carolina. Where did you go? If your next address history is starting from Thursday, 5 p.m., then of course there's the discrepancy and there's, you know, there's not, there's a, there's a missing link. So there has to be that transition. So if you left Wednesday, 12 p.m., North Carolina, from Wednesday, 12 p.m., where did you go? Okay, take us through to, let's say, Friday midnight. You were in New York, okay? <laughs> thank you so much, Raz. I'll be reading your comments soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, yeah, you should be able to take the officer on your journey where you have lived from A to Z. There's a portion where you sometimes have to tell them where the couple have, you know, the couple has lived together. Okay, so if the couple has lived together at a certain location, make sure that it's fitting into the scheme of things. Things Think of it as a puzzle. You must have all the pieces fitting together to create a credible story. And it's interesting, sometimes when you're filling your own forms, you don't realize some of the discrepancies. So working with somebody who has an eye and who understands these things, they will be able to point it out to you that, look, there's, a, there's something missing here 
or something doesn't make sense and then you'll be able to adjust it so basically if you're if you're doing if you're preparing for an interview make sure you have all the answers okay um you should understand what you've done you should understand everything you've put down so sometimes i have clients asking me oh uh, let's say i lived in north carolina from monday to friday however on wednesday i traveled to new jersey new jersey traveling to new jersey should not change your address history that's the travel the fact that you were in new jersey on wednesday does not mean that you were residing actually in new jersey okay so you need to understand what the residency rule means like if they say address history what it covers and what it doesn't so brief casual travels or brief casual absences from your residence you know do not require you to list those as part of your address history otherwise some people will have really crazy address history so be, be careful of that so go go through all your forms make sure you've reviewed all the information i give you an example of your address history make sure everything makes sense everything is credible remember that the standard is always by a preponderance of the evidence what does this mean meaning that what you're saying is credible and that it's 50 percent more than likely to be true so if what you're saying is incredible or unbelievable chances are that no reasonable human being is going to approve that application for you so make sure you have gone through your forms that's what i do with my clients we do a very rigorous and um, thorough process we're going through everything we're drilling you just like on the d-day you don't go there and start shaking in your boots because you've had um you know rehearsals and you have you have been prepared for for you know to face the 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 person who will be interviewing you and then if you are doing again a marriage-based interview please remember to collect all your updated bona fides so for example if you applied um if you did an initial application and um the initial application your wife was pregnant so let's say you you are a man and you are the foreigner let's say you're from ghana or you're from nigeria and your wife is a u.s citizen she is an american right and she's filing for you the time you guys filed the application um you know she was let's say two months pregnant by the time you are going for the interview let's say she's delivered and you have obtained a birth certificate that's a list that's listing you the beneficiary of the application as the father of the newborn baby make sure you have copies of the of the updated bona fides the birth certificate of the child is a bona fide of the marriage because it's going to prove that oh look i'm not just here in the marriage you know for green card i'm actually here in the marriage for um to establish life with my partner so make sure you take that updated bona fide make copies of it take the original certified all of that okay and then be sure to present that on the day of the interview collect all updated bona fides make sure your documents are up to date those are things i can help you with make sure we have all the documents you need to be battle ready for the interview all right guys let's read a few comments russ b russ well russ Ewoku says hello hello russ how are you doing russ says keep doing your stuff we love you i love you so much right back thank you so much russ joe williams says need assistance need some assistance from you sure i mean please call my number yes can you please post your phone number i did so hopefully you can call us on 8027800564 my team is on standby waiting to hear from you and then let me get a look at your case specifically and give you strategies to help you so the next thing is yes collect the bona fides guys please I can't emphasize this enough. The bona fides are everything. Remember that in a U.S. immigration application, your story, your story, your story, you are a storyteller. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you articulate your story in a very consistent and beautiful way. And, this, and the story has to be in line with law. It has to be in line with statutes because we're not just telling, you know, telling stories in vacuum out of context. Your story has to be within context, okay? And that's what I'm here to help you do, to guide through, guide you through the process and make sure you're telling a story that is credible, that is probative, and that is relevant to the adjudicator, okay? So collect your bona fides, make sure that your bona fides go to make your case stronger and does not go to actually start make the adjudicator question everything you know, everything that you've stated 
All right, guys. So, for ex- oh, well, I won't give an example of bona fides. I've already, already given the example of birth certificates as a bona fide. Then next, um, ensure that you have all the originals or certified copies for the interview. So, remember that you should not, not, not ever submit originals. Okay, usually they will not ask you to submit originals because USCIS has a mountain of documents they are reviewing, like hundreds of thousands of applications. So if you take an original, chances are you might not get it back. Okay, so of course you need to be sure what they are asking you. If they ask you to submit an original, then you should, but make sure you have copies um, as backup because the USPS sometimes loses documents of clients, the USCIS sometimes also loses documents. So, you want to be sure that you have your originals with you and then you can take those originals to the interview. So for example, you have um, a marriage certificate. That should be your original copy. Make sure you're taking that to the interview along with all the originals that you have. All right, guys, I, I don't want to bore you <laughs> to death. Oh my goodness, can you guys believe I forgot to spill my tea? This is right here. Yep, so we just spilled all the tea on how to prepare for your your interview. If you need my help, please call me right there, 802 564 What I have noticed is, is that some people will file applications and some people actually have difficulty articulating their own rights, you know, making their story heard and actually advocating for themselves. And that's why you need an attorney. If you're not sure, if you're jittery, if you're worried, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help advocate. You know, I'm, I'm, your, I'm your biggest advocate. I'm your cheerleader. I'm the one going to make sure that these people give you what you deserve, okay? So don't, don't take it lying down because a very, very small mishap and then everything goes down the drain. You need an attorney and a lawyer who's going to be there for you who is not shy, who's not timid, who's going to speak up and who's actually going to let them know that this person actually deserves his green card. Here's why. Reason number one, here is the backing evidence. Reason number two, here is the evidence. Here is reason number three. The statute says this. The constitution says this. The Immigration and Nationality Act says this. Here is my client's document. See, so this is what we're here for, to make sure that nobody deprives you of what you deserve. So please, Contact me if you need my help, and I will be happy to assist you guys. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I'll be seeing you in the next video. I know I haven't been doing too many lives these days. I've been just busy. My head is under the water. I'm just advocating for my clients. I'm representing them. I'm fighting for them. Like, look, we didn't come to play, guys. So, yeah, if you need my help, call me right there, 802 564 and I'll be excited to help you. This is what I do for a living. I just love it. And um, yeah, um, you can count on me, okay? So call me and we'll talk some more and find a strategy for your case. All right, guys, <laughs> let me not ramble on and on. I'll see you guys soon um, during the week. And please be safe, take care. Oh, we have one more comment here. Let me read from Asari Isaac, Isaac Asari Kwabna. Isaac Kwabna Asari. Oh my goodness, the name is all mixed up. So, how are you? Hope you guys are doing well. Um, keep it up. Thank you so much for watching. Really happy to have you on here. I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you stay safe and be good. Take care. Bye.